a uh, 501c3, not-for-profit organization. It was founded in 2009. And we're all about trying to uh, uh, in, uh, reinforce and educate and, and promote this movement of participatory medicine, which is that patients and providers need to be more closely partnered in, in healthcare. We need providers who are in giving patients information, encouraging them to seek their own information, patients who are empowered, engaged, educated, etc. And, uh, and, and we think that that's a much more powerful vision for where healthcare needs to go. And in healthcare, in healthcare organizations, healthcare systems in which that takes place, we have better outcomes, better satisfaction, lower costs. Um, so it's a very exciting organization. We have members uh, from across the gamut of stakeholders in healthcare. We have patients and caregivers, patient advocates, and consultants and doctors and nurses and sort of everybody involved in healthcare. Uh, are providers invested in participatory medicine? Do they get what it means? Uh, heavens no. Uh, I think that's really an uphill battle in many circles. I speak to groups of physicians all the time and I think this is very new for them. For some, the first that they hear about patient engagement is that they have to achieve patient engagement in order to uh, get meaningful use dollars. Um, others are a little bit more curious and they're interested and some are quite nervous about it. I mean, they're not, a, not happy when their patients are bringing them references that they found online, for example, um, or patients want access to their record or they want to be able to make their appointments online. So they're feeling this pressure. They don't really know what this is all about. And I think the natural tendency is for us to sort of, us, meaning us doctors, to dig in our heels and to sort of resist this. And what I try to teach physicians is that, you know, resistance to some extent is futile and, and you're going to feel much better if you just, um, uh, you know, learn to uh, uh, stop worrying about it and learn to embrace uh, participatory medicine. Well, there's a, a great misunderstanding out there, which is that, um, you know, so can patients be too participatory? It's a misunderstanding out there that, that what this all means is that the patient is always right and that whatever the patient wants, the patient gets. And I, that's wrong. That's wrong. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, the reason that we are healthcare professionals and we go through all the training is so that we can advise our patients and we can be helpful to our patients. Uh, you know, participatory medicine doesn't mean that a patient can come in and just demand any test in the world and any drug in the world and we just have to accede to their, their demands. It's not like that. It's more about, you know, the patient comes in, has an idea that maybe they would need something or they want something, and, and we can have a discussion about it. And at the end of that discussion of sharing ideas and listening, then we come out with a conclusion. We say, yeah, maybe you don't need this test, or maybe you do. So I think that that's really what participatory medicine is. Washington, D.C. has, uh, or our government, has been, uh, I think, helpful to the extent that they can in, in pulling levers that government can do to promote participatory medicine and patient engagement. I think the most visible thing that they've done is they baked some of this into uh, Meaningful Use 2 and also Meaningful Use 3 uh, uh, regulations so that physicians, in order to get paid these Meaningful Use dollars, need to achieve certain benchmarks of, quote, patient engagement. Unfortunately, as I suggested earlier, this is often amounting to checking the box and physicians and healthcare organizations are doing really duplicitous things in order to you know, check those boxes. Um, so, so, so I think that, that the other things that in, in the policy arena that I think are helpful, um, accountable care organizations. I think in order to have an accountable care organization, you really need to have patients engaged in their health care. I mean, if you're going to improve quality, reduce costs, patients need to be better partners in, in, in their care, and it really needs to be more of a collaboration. Um, uh, Patient-centered medical homes, uh, some of the uh, things that are being done uh, through the uh, uh, CMS Innovation Fund. So yeah, I think to the extent that government is able, they have been able to promote this idea of uh, patient engagement and participatory medicine. So the future of participatory medicine, I, I think, is bright. I think this is a very exciting time. This is really the first time I've, any of us have ever uh, remembered when people are using this term, participatory medicine, e-patient, patient engagement, with a great deal of regularity. Now, it's often misinterpreted. It means a lot of different things to different people today. But, but I'm seeing that we're moving in the right direction. And I think that increasingly healthcare providers are understanding that if they want to achieve the goals that they want to achieve, they are going to 
to need to find ways to engage patients and, and engage providers with those patients, which is participatory medicine. So I think we're headed in the right direction. I think in five years this is going to be much more common, and I think hopefully we'll be doing other things. So the Society uh, for Participatory Medicine, one of the things we're trying to focus on is education, and we, we want to educate physicians in this, uh, this area of uh, participatory medicine. We also want to uh, educate other healthcare professionals, and then in a parallel way, we want to, we want to educate patients because this is, this is changing culture. This is both sides of the street. We need to change not just provider behavior, but also the patient and caregiver behavior.